Good morning. In preparation for the third Sunday of the Easter season, I'm here at Immaculate Conception Parish Church where you will have the opportunity to share in Mass with Father Ron Yao as our celebrant and homilist. The third week of the Easter season has us seeing Jesus meet the men on the road to Emmaus. That journey really depicts what sacred Mass is for. As Jesus approaches, he kind of hears their faults as we do in the penitential rite. He opens the sacred scriptures to them and then their hearts begin to burn with his love. But it's not the recognition of the risen Lord until they get to Emmaus and they sit at a meal where they see Jesus in the breaking of the bread. How important it is for us to realize that it is the risen Lord that comes to us and feeds us. And on this great feast of the road to Emmaus, where is it today? Where is it this week? Where is it now in this time of COVID-19 that we will meet the Lord on the way? And will he set our hearts on fire until the day we can once again see him truly revealed in the breaking of the bread? Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, 
and what I have done, and all I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, and with him my, at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about this patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is, in, is among our midst today. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon, upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Lupus said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we are hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since it took this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they were approaching the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. 
But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, while he was with them at the table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. And then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Everything just makes sense. 
And what is left now is only the clarity of purpose and meaning in life. Why? Because it is the Lord who speaks. The journey to Emmaus is actually a journey with the Eucharist. The two constitutive elements of the Mass were introduced to us by the Lord here, namely the, litur the liturgy of the Word, where Jesus explained to us the Scriptures and its meaning, and the liturgy of the Eucharist, where Jesus broke bread with them. Without most of us knowing, the Eucharist is indeed the source and summit of our Christian life. That is, the source of our strength, the source of our inspiration, whose goal for me is to serve back the very source. Like the two disciples, our life's journey could be caught up in the darkness, in confusion and frustration. And it is for this reason that Jesus left us a companion in our journey to serve as light and inspiration that will enable us to understand the mysteries of human existence. He left us the Eucharist, where in a very personal and intimate way, He can journey with us at times when we are treading on our own respective roads to Emmaus. Most studies agree that the road to Emmaus was a dead end. As we have known, most dead ends are cliffs or dangerous edges. edges. One would not want to go, otherwise he can fall to death. We might wonder why Jesus had to go, as it were, had to prioritize to go to Emmaus before appearing to most of his disciples at a locked room in Jerusalem. We have been given an impression that these two disciples, while walking, we're also discussing and debating. It must be a sad conversation, one that is filled with disappointment and frustrations, knowing that their anticipated Messiah had just died, and so again, it was a failure. Their frustration was manifested by their faces that looked downcast. That road to the dead end was a road to despair. And the Lord had to meet them there to rescue them from that darkness. During our retreat, a friend priest shared to us about his knowledge of the geography of the, of the place. He said, the road to Emmaus was going westward to the direction where the sun sets. And Jesus encountered them there only to implicitly persuade them to go to the opposite direction, apparently eastward, going to east, going to Jerusalem. But this time, not anymore downcast, but joyful because they had already seen with 2020 vision the greater scheme of things. And what they saw was real because they had shared meal with the risen Lord. The person who told us about the resurrection was resurrected himself. And he is as real and as intimate as a friend who dines with us, who lives within us as, he receive, as we receive his body and blood in the sacrament of communion. Now, the two disciples will come back to Jerusalem to let other disciples know that the good news is true without question. Now they would go eastward to behold the sunrise, to proclaim the rising of the great light. Whether we like it or not, the pandemic will surely come, and now it is here. But I guess it comes just at the right time, when the priests know how to use their cell phones, when the priests know are now familiar with Facebook, with Zoom and YouTube, and Pope Francis is, is in Twitter. And we remember him at the early years of his papacy, lauding the giftedness of technology and of the social media. While most of us then were so overwhelmed by some bad influence of social media, the Pope looks at it with optimism. But what is the point here? 
despite today's lockdown and suspension of public celebrations of sacraments, the Eucharist continues to be celebrated, perhaps in a different mode. Now we have private Eucharistic celebrations, live streamed to social media. And this tells us the very important point. This beautiful sacrament left to us by Jesus will still continue to accompany us, to accompany us in all our journeys, despite lockdowns, to give us hope to be a beacon of light. Karl Barth, one of the 20th century most famous theologians, was on a streetcar one day in Basel, Switzerland, where he lived and lectured. A tourist to the city climbed on the streetcar and sat down next to Barth. The two men started chatting with each other. Are you new to the city? Barth inquired. Yes, said the tourist. Is there anything you would particularly like to see in this city? Asked Barth. Yes, he said. I'd love to meet the famous theologian Karl Barth. Do you know him? Barth replied. Well, as a matter of fact, I do. I give him a shave every morning. The tourist got off the street, street car quite delighted. He went back to his hotel saying to himself, I met Karl Barth's barber today. <laughs> that amuses me. The tourist was in the presence of every person he most wanted to be, but even with the most obvious clue, he never realized that the man with whom he was talking was the great man himself. Brothers and sisters, while on the road to Emmaus, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. At certain times, we might hardly recognize the presence of the Lord, no matter how present he always has been. We might ask, where is the east? Where is the light? Where is the Lord? This time, we can always turn to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We can behold him at the center of the altar. We can recognize him at the breaking of the bread. We might even wonder why most monstrants are designed to appear like a sun, like the sun. We are to understand that in reality, Jesus is the soul invictus. He is the unconquered rising sun of the east, now right before us to be adored and glorified. In his apostolic letter, Mani Ludiscum Domini, St. Pope John Paul II says, When the two disciples urged Jesus to stay with them, Jesus afterwards responded by giving them a way to stay in him, by entering into a profound communion with Jesus through the sacrament of the Eucharist. Soon after Jesus agreed to their request to stay, according to the Pope, Jesus' face would disappear. Yet, the Master would stay with them, hidden in the breaking of the bread, which had opened their eyes to recognize Him. Now therefore, when minds are enlightened and hearts are enkindled, signs begin to speak. Jesus is present with us today. Let our souls cry out, Stay with us, Lord. We are in deep fear because of the scourge of the pandemic is overwhelmingly beyond our control. Stay with us, Lord, and show us the path of life. Let us take rest upon your consoling care and abide in the peace of your life-giving love. Please then, we will now profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now come to the Father who provides us with our needs and look up, looks upon us with love and care. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of divine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed God, God. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me. Pray 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Celebrate the memorial of his 
resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome then to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary Immaculate, with Blessed Joseph, the Blessed Mother Seton, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints that have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. With divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
with the blood of Christ you will be saved for eternal life. Prayer to make a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually in my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Good morning. Just want to thank Father for the beautiful homily giving us so much hope and in this time of the pandemic. I think it's so wonderful to think that the road to Emmaus was a dead end until Christ turned them around and that's what he desires to do us in our fear and anxieties and turn around our hearts so that we may walk back into the rising of the sign of the resurrection. A great surprise came to me in the mail today. I received some uh, brand new t-shirts uh, Operation Safe Mode t-shirts. So um, we're going to uh, make these available uh, to you uh, that you can uh, get your own t-shirts and, and wear them in the safety of your home. Uh, so we'll be having a, a new email address for you to receive your own shirts. Uh, so as we continue to stay safe, uh, we will uh, each, every, every Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll have our presentation of OSM. Special presentations coming up for the Feast of St. Joseph, our first episode on St. Joseph, uh, Practicing Safe Mode, uh, will be on Thursday, and then we'll have uh, two more episodes on St. Joseph, including Sacred Mass in his honor on his feast on May 1st. Also, just a reminder, if you haven't remembered to put out your yard sign uh, for the Easter season, we'd ask you to do so, so that as people drive by, not only will they see Divine Mercy, picture in your window, but also the joyful hope of Easter as we celebrate it. And also I want to thank everyone who participated in the Diocesan Lent Appeal, both parishes. Uh, our parishes have reached the Diocesan Goals at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and also Macca Conception Parish Church. So I thank you for your uh, participation and just remember now that all the donations that you make towards either parish remains in the parish for the work that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, here at Macro Conception, uh, we want to get a uh, heat for Father Ronnell uh, next winter so he can be comfortable. And at St. Louis Advanced Seat, we want to finish up some of the groundwork around the new building. So have a blessed day. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of your resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Elizabeth and Satan. Pray for us. Mary conceived without original sin. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is celebrated. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.